All right, we should be live here in the Creative Life Scholars Facebook group. I'm Sam Kimberly, the, the host of Creative Life Scholars, and I am here with Kathy Ferris. I'm so excited to talk to you, Kathy. You were one of the first people to join Creative Life Scholars, which we didn't talk about before we got on. Really? Uh, live now. Yeah, I remember, because you're one of the first people to introduce yourselves in the, yourself in the group. And I just remember thinking, wow, I am so excited to get to know her because stand-up comedy, like so cool. I love it. Yeah. I think you found the group through Don't Keep Your Day Job. I did. I did. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So for yeah. you, for the um, viewers who aren't watching, I'll just share real quickly. Um, Don't Keep Your Day Job. Most of you are familiar with Don't Keep Your Day Job. Kathy Heller is the host of Don't Keep Your Day Job. She's got a book and a podcast and a wonderful Facebook community. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that Kathy, we connected um, through Don't Keep Your Day Job. Um, so anyway, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Excited to get started. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey to stand-up comedy and what that looked like? Sure, sure. Well, you know, it was about a 20-year journey. Uh, I started when I was 44 years old. Um, I said I was going to start when I was 25, but then I had a bunch of great excuses and 20 years later, um, or 19 and a half years later, if I'm going to be specific, uh, I ran out of excuses. And so I just took a class uh, here in Boston. It's called Improv Boston. And then I took another class. And then I took another class. And then I decided, OK, I'm just going to start going to open mics. And little by little by little, um, I just started building an act and getting booked. and. Here I am now, eight years later. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. So can you fill in a little bit more of the details? Like <laughs> what happened between... That wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in those eight years is that uh, I went from doing open mics, you know, being the person that they thought somebody's mom drove them there, to um, actually getting booked on shows, to then becoming the... Um, a finalist in the Boston Comedy Festival, which is a pretty wow. um, big international festival we have here uh, in Boston. It attracts people from all over the country. And um, two years ago, I was a finalist in that. And I was very excited about that. Um, as well as I started working for Improv Boston and Laugh Boston, teaching for them. Um, I've become known as somebody who just loves um, teaching about this. I love the mechanics of a joke, uh, but more so, I feel like it's giving back because when I started at 44, I was always afraid that people would be looking at me or thinking like, what is she doing here? You know, this is not for her. And nobody ever made me feel that way. And I felt like I need to give that back because um, I think if I didn't get a warm reception, I don't know if I would have stuck with it. So um, I do that. Um, I teach. Uh, I teach online right now with the pandemic happening, which has been crazy, crazy. Right. Um, but I started doing these boot camps for people who are who are doing comedy to keep them going. And then I am teaching intro to stand up, which I've been doing for about four years now. I've taught hundreds of people how to how to start doing comedy, and uh, I am known for being able to do it in a way that makes sense, there's process behind it, um, there's rules and formulas that once you learn them, you can decide if you want to teach, use those ones or do your own thing, um, and then kind of just push you into the community. I, gosh, there's so much to pull out of that. So, <laughs> no, it's great. That wasn't a long answer. I'm sorry, Sam. No, no, it's perfect. It's such a good, amazing story. I think, I think I want to start with the place where you were talking about how, you know, you've, you felt like when you came into the world of stand up comedy, you were kind of expecting kind of, kind of this reception, this certain kind of reception from people, mm -hmm. but you didn't get it. And I think, when I think of stand-up comedy, I think of vulnerability, really, and fear. Mm -hmm. I think of the fear that comes with putting yourself out there in a way that's so vulnerable. Making people laugh is not easy. And <laughs> it, I mean, it's like any other performance art in, in so many ways, but it's it almost has like an extra layer to it because there's all of this suffering 
that I can envision happening <laughs> if your joke falls flat. I mean, how do you how do you get over that fear? What do you do with that fear? That's a good question. And it does happen. The best part of what comedy gives you is that you get really comfortable with your vulnerability because you're absolutely right. You're getting you're going up there and by just going up there, by virtue of just being behind a mic, you're saying, I think I'm funny and I'm gonna make you laugh. And when that doesn't happen, and sometimes that doesn't happen, um, you build that muscle. And when you're able to build that muscle, it translates in so many other things in your life. But for your comedy, um, when you're excited about what you're doing, you know, you just brush it off and you go on to the next thing. You go on to the next thing. I'll give you a little secret. What we do in comedy is that when we're trying something out that we're not real sure about, we call it um, a sandwich. Well, we call it a certain type of sandwich, but we call it a sandwich where we'll put what we know, like a killer bit right at the front. So we know we're gonna make you laugh with that. And then at the end. And so in the middle, that's where, when you feel the most vulnerable, um, that way we know I will get you. Um, it might just take another minute. So it's a way that we build that in. That is a really interesting technique. I feel like that is applicable to other pieces of yeah. life too. kind of sandwiching yourself when you're doing something that makes you feel afraid, sandwiching it in between things that empower you or give you that kind of confidence. Is that kind of what you were saying? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're bookending it with things that, you know, your strengths are you're bookended, right? So like, I know I'm good at this or I know I know how I can answer this question. Or I know I can sell you on this piece um, and on this piece, but it's the one in the middle. So put it in the middle. That way you feel you get the energy from the first and you get the energy going into the second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so you're teaching, you're teaching mm -hmm. online. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit more about that and how that, how that's working during the pandemic right now and the opportunities? Sure. For sure. Um, yeah, it was, I had teaching jobs all lined up. Um, uh, it was going to be my busiest season, actually, and lost them all <laughs> because we're not doing this um, in-house. But the thing with comedy is that you don't want to get rusty. And so um, I've been building my own intro to stand-up anyway. And so I kind of had it there. It's like, why don't I just do it online? Because we have Zoom. We have the ability to, to inter interface, interact. Uh, once a week with this. So it basically brings people through the process of like, how do I start? Like, how do I put material together? And then how do I get behind a mic and do this? Um, and we are in a weird time right now. But the thing is, is that we're still doing comedy and we're still using Zoom. We're still using this medium and we're going to be here for a little while. So this right. is a great time to learn stand up because you can really focus in on your material and how comfortable you feel with your material and using zoom is kind of um, a safeguard if you will because you can have your notes right behind you nobody even needs to know that um, you can be in the comfort of your home so you have you have some advantages to doing that and at the same time you can really work on like what is it that I want to talk about what is it what is it that I find funny or what what's happened and I have opinions about that I want to talk about um, Comedy is a very therapeutic thing, I will say. I have many, I have a range of people who take stand up. One, people who like, I just want to do, I want to do stand up, I want to be a stand up. Great. With this, I can help you put a three minute set together. Um, people who have a bucket list, like, oh, I've always wanted to do that. Um, and I'm not sure if I want to do anything else with it. I just want to take the class, which was me my first time. Uh, and then we have people in the middle where it's like, I'm going to do this instead of therapy. <laughs> um, I've just gone through some stuff or I, you know, my friends all say that I'm funny and maybe I should just kind of pursue this. And it's a really interesting mix of people because most of the time, a little bit of all of those groups keep going with it because they notice that they have something to say or they're getting something out of their comedy. Because sometimes I do jokes, Sam, just because for me, right? <laughs> Yeah, a lot on my husband right now. So, <laughs> yeah, he's the audience that can't get away, right? 
Sure. <laughs> <The> material. <laughs> and the material, right, exactly. Right. I'm surprised he hasn't even come in here yet, Stan, because I have like, if I have one thing to do that day, he's still going to come in the room. He's still going to come in. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can't get away from the people in your house right now. No. Mm -mm. No. No. And right. So they're the butt of all the jokes and the and the audience. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Right. So I yeah, I'm hearing a lot about like transformation and pivot. I think that's really interesting. So you shared just now that you kind of came in with this experimental attitude mm -hmm. when you came in. Um so did you have a previous career before you came into comedy? Did I have what? Because you, you said you you start you were thinking about comedy when you were like twenty five, but you didn't oh, yeah. start doing it until you were like forty. Yeah, yeah. Um, what happened was I had kids, <laughs> and um, I had a lot of fear about it. I really didn't know how to do stand up, uh, so that was a really good excuse to kind of push it away because my understanding of what stand up was um, wasn't what it is, and I find that with a lot of people really mm -hmm. kind of demystifying what stand-up is, um, which is really just your point of view and um, putting a few little um, practices together of like formulas and ways that you can just move some things around and how you're saying it, and then it becomes a joke. Um, I just had a real, I had a big fear. I, the first year I did this, I had stage fright, like nobody's business. Um, but, you know, comedy's addicting and the laughter and the adrenaline and the ability to chase a joke. I know that, you know, you wanted to talk about like, like what is it about living this creative life? Um, it's that, Sam, you know, it's this thing of, instead of being um, looking at things in a different way, like I love being a victim. Um, victim mentality is like, it was me, I loved it. Uh, but what comedy made me do is start seeing when things were happening to me, when things would happen that maybe I wasn't, I didn't care for, or I didn't know how to, you know, adjust to. I started looking for the funny in it. I could take mm -hmm. myself out of the situation and be like, okay, where's the funny in this? So like when Sarah from Verizon didn't give me my upgrade and made me cry, I was thinking, okay, I could really go into my victim mentality here, which I love to do. Or I could step back and be like, you make a joke about this. It took me a year, but it was still chasing that joke and knowing instead of complaining about Verizon, I was able to be like, huh, I can make something funny of this. I can take something bad and make something funny with it. That's that's a really superficial um, example, but you could put the, apply, apply that to anything in your life. No, I think that's so true. And I, I have noticed, I mean, I'm a huge fan of stand-up comedy. I listen, I watch different um, Netflix specials and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've noticed that a lot of the time it's comedians talking about something that's really pretty terrible. <laughs> but, you know, then they transform it and it's hilarious. I mean, I can't, God, I can't remember his name right now, of course. But we just watched a Netflix special maybe I'll remember it later. And basically his entire set was this story about how he pooped himself because he ate something with dairy in it and he's he's um, lactose intolerant. And, you know, but he kept inserting little stories inside mm -hmm. of like the bigger story, which was, I think it's really interesting when people do that. But I guess that's a technique that people can use mm -hmm. with like a larger story and then like little stories inside of it. You got it, you got it, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. I think that that's what it is. You know, I call it chasing the joke. Um, so when you know, even if I'm having a bad day, if I know I have something like, I think there's something here. I think this is going to be hilarious. It might take me three months to make it hilarious, but the journey of it has been fun too. Because you know, like I know this is going to work. I know it's going to work. I don't know how it's going to work, but it'll work. And I love how you were talking about it kind of gets you out of that victim mentality mm -hmm. because if you are constantly looking for the joke, then you're not looking for the victimness. You're not looking, I'm making that a word. I'm just going. I like it. Let's make um, it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're not looking for the victimness. You're not looking for the, the, the fear. You're not looking for the, right. the, the hate and the holding on to resentment. You're looking for it from a different perspective. And I think that really aligns with the through line of creativity, with, with readjusting your mindset and approaching things from the perspective of curiosity. 
I completely agree. I think this this is one of the reasons I joined this group because of the like mindedness of it. I'm very cognizant of the people that I surround myself with um, because I have very little patience for the old me of like somebody who had a bunch of good excuses or that they're looking at the negative piece of something where I'm very much into people who are adapting or evolving who are just looking at things in a way of like a different point of view of it. If it's more hilarious, I love that too. Uh, I have this thing where in the back of my head, someday I'm going to do a, um, a whole workshop for people who have gone through divorce, five minutes set on your divorce, because it's a huge, it's a traumatic thing. I have not been divorced, but a lot of people that uh, whom I love and care for have. And one of the things that when my when this happens to my friends, I send them a journal and I say, take notes, because in a year you're going to have really good material. Right now, you're, it's tough. You're going through it, but just take notes. Um, and my sister would attest to it. She's like, we have to do this because if if I didn't think of these as um, a comedy set, I would be crying right now. But there's a lot of gold here. <laughs> Gosh, that is so important. And so, I mean, I think, I mean, of course, for divorce, but even for like all of the stuff that we're experiencing right now with the loss through coronavirus and every all the emotions mm -hmm. that are coming up for people. That is so important. I completely agree with you. No matter what your art is, whether you're going to make it into something funny and it'll be a stand up comedy set or I mean, all, all of our emotions, all of our human experiences, they always transform into something if you're that kind kind of person where you're you're active in your creative journey, um, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like for you. I think that is so amazing to think about. Absolutely. Thanks. You know, I don't want to brag, but I actually am a little bit of an artist myself. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty much a stereotypical middle-aged woman because I love true crime. Uh, I really into, are you guys, I don't know if anybody <laughs> else can, one of the things that I like to do is I recycle my wine corks um, and I take my love for true crime and my unused art degree and I paint portraits of the wrongfully convicted. Oh my and gosh. This, this guy actually, this is a neighbor of mine who had a Twitter fight <laughs> ever source and should be convicted. So he's probably not a good one to use. Sorry, Darren. Um, <laughs> um, some of you may have, this is Brandon Dassey from Making of a Murderer. <laughs> I'm going to sell them on Etsy. I got a shop called Go Cork Yourself. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Yeah. So, I mean, you said that you, you know, you're an artist and then you showed the, the quarks, but I think you're an artist for simply being, I mean, not for simply, but for also for being a stand-up comedian. I think there's a lot of artistry. You, Sam. In I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, um, definitely is a performing arts um, type of thing. And it's nice to get out of yourself and, and share a lot of yourself. When you're talking about being vulnerable, that's a big piece of this because a lot of, you know, you may not, I don't talk specifically about like, you know, I'm an open book, but there's a lot of nuggets in there that are just true to, you know, who I am and how I feel about things. Yes, I'm sure. I mean, that's, that's so important. And, you know, you've got a set, I'm sure that no one else could, I mean, it's you, it's your, you're putting yourself into it. It's your stories, your perspectives, your life. And you can't, you can't share that in any other way. And I think that that's artistry. That is to me, the definition, the definition of what it means to be an artist. Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. I think that the more you can, and some of the things that I've seen, um, with the people in this group, what they share and the things that they do, it's personal. You know, it's a very personalized thing. And when you can be personal and authentic, um, you, it brings people closer to you and they believe you and they trust you and they're endearing to you. And it's amazing what can happen when you can make that kind of connection. I completely agree. Oh, I just got really, really deep there. Yeah, that tends to hurt me. I, I tend to go my so you said an art degree and I am a philosophy and religion person. So I can I go deep fairly quickly and easily. I, I like that deep conversation. That's definitely a, a me thing. And you're a yeah, great you brought it up to me, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So so a little bit later, I think this is really important. And a, a reason why I do a lot of these conversations is because I want people to be inspired, be inspired by you and the work that you're doing and be able to take one step. 
So mm -hmm. what is one step if someone's watching today and they're like, you know, I, like you, when you started, you know, a couple mm -hmm. years ago with stand up comedy and you felt very vulnerable and nervous and, you know, what's one thing that someone could do today to just take, just learn something or take one step, one bite at learning a little bit more about stand up comedy? I think that's, a, here's the advice I would give. Great question. And I wish I knew this when I started, and it probably wasn't there when I started, but it's here right now because of the pandemic, is go online and find open mics and just watch them. Because if you can watch the process in which people start, at an open mic, everybody's kind of starting at the same level. Even if you've been doing it for eight years and you're coming in with a new, a new joke, you're starting from zero again. And so it's a level playing field. So if you can see where people start, then you can think most of the time you walk away being like, I can do this. Oh, I get this. I can do this. And then so the second step would be just go online and Google, like, how do you write a joke? There are so many YouTube videos and all that out there. And the third step is if you're like, I'm really serious about this. I want to do it. Then take a class, take an online class. Um, just even for the reinforcement of it and for the discipline of it. Um, that's really, you don't, people really can't teach you comedy, um, but they can give you the knowledge that you need so you can decide what you want to use for it. But yes, that's so, so interesting. So important. Thank you. And so, so when you say find an open mic and mm -hmm. watch it online, where where could people look for that kind of thing? You can just Google, um, you know, open my um, online open mics. Okay, and, uh, that's good. You can actually watch one in LA, or you can watch one from New York, or you can watch one from Buffalo. They're all that's they're cool. all over the place. Yeah, um, go on Facebook and um, Google that. And a lot of them will come up. You'll start getting them all on your news feeds and stuff. Uh, but you can just step in and, and watch and watch. Watch, so cool. watch a Zoom show. Watch a free Zoom show and see how people are doing it. That is so – it's such a good idea, too, because, I mean – even if you're not that interested in trying stand-up comedy yourself, like I'm not that interested in trying it myself. I love watching comedy. I love mm -hmm. watching open mics. And that's such a great way to support artists right now is by watching them live. If they have a live stream or something like that. I love that idea. It's such a good one. Cause like I, you know, I'm suffering here in my house trying to come up with ideas of what to do when I've run out of things. So that is such a good idea. Well, Mike Perbiglia has a new podcast where that's basically what he's doing. He's writing a special and he's bringing you along the process so you can really see how people build uh, their comedy, which I think people are fascinated by these days. Like, how did that happen? Um, so that's a that's a podcast that you may want to just listen to as well. Yes. I've actually seen him live. He's amazing. <laughs> he's, amazing. he's amazing. But it's so, so cool to see him like, you know, pitching things and Ira Glass being like, I don't get that part. Why don't you come back? What are you trying to say to me? And so it's neat to see the process. That is so cool. Thank yeah. you for these suggestions. That's amazing. I'm going to take you up on them. I'm going to download that. I'm going to watch, listen to the podcast. Yeah, that's so. great. It's great. Awesome. So um, last question, and then we'll do a little bit more, talk a little bit more about your class and a little more promotion. But I just want to know from you, we talked a little bit about this, but more specifically, what does it mean to you to live a creative life? Well, I know I, I talked a little bit about this. Um, you know, I've been doing this for eight years, and it's really saved me, to be honest with you, that I'm able to do something that I get to carry around mentally with me every day. Um, it is a thing that takes my mind off of worrying about things or that loop in your head of like, stupid stuff that we don't really need to worry about because it probably will never manifest itself where I get to walk around with a joke all day, or I get to um, be a part of somebody else's journey with this. That's the part that I love. I love about this in terms of teaching um, that, you know, I really struggled with it because I was like, I just want to do performing. But for me to, to lead a creative life, I feel like teaching is a way that I'm giving back because if I can open that door for other people to, 
to say, this is how, this is how you do it. Now go do it because you were able to do it. Um, and then being able to just check in with them and reinforce and help open doors for them. Um, it's, it's a selfish thing. It feels really good um, to me to be able to do it. So that's, it's more of an emotional thing to be living a creative life for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. I, of course, there's <laughs> the right answer, and there's all the right answers. So it was a perfect answer, and I don't think it's selfish at all. I think teaching is one of the most selfless things that you can do um, mm -hmm. to help people. I think it's a beautiful thing. So thank you, thank you for what you do. Thank you for being here today. And we talked about your your class, and I think that information is available on your website. That is linked. Mm -hmm. in show notes um right here in the com in the um top part of the the feed of the facebook feed um and then you you do shows online too do you want to share a little bit of that information mm -hmm. so my class is uh, my class is intro to stand up and that's going to start in august and it's one day a week and um it's about two and a half hours and we really get into this and i bring you through it um, and then we end with a showcase, which is actually one of my shows. I have a show every Wednesday night. It's called Ferris and Friends. It's sponsored by Improv Boston, where we bring new comedians and seasoned comedians together so that they can share a stage experience. Um, it's free right now, which is awesome. Um, and it's at 8 o'clock Eastern Central Time. That's amazing. So we'll share the links for those. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? Anything else that we need to promote or talk about? Um, you know, no, we can, it's all on the website, so I don't want to clutter it with that, but I will say, um, to this group, you know, if there's any way, if you have questions or if there's any way that I can help support you or have you do not hesitate to, um, send me a message or put it in the comments. Um, I love how supportive this whole group is. Thank you so much. I am so I'm so happy that you're a part of this group. Like I said from the beginning, when I saw that you joined. I was so excited to get to know you, and I'm I'm so grateful for this opportunity to that we've had today to chat. So, like Kathy says, if you guys comment here and you have any questions for her, she can get back to you. And um, so we'll finish this up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.